Now, we're going to use the meter to measure resistance. Now, normally when you first buy your meter, uh, this one here's got a lot of different options. Whereas this one here, it's pretty much auto ranging, which means it's only got three options. And the three options for this stick fluke meter, uh, volts, if I want volts, I just need to set it to the V. Whether it's AC or DC volts, whether I'm measuring a battery or alternating current out of a power source, it's going to auto range for me. And I don't need to set it to a highest setting because it's just on V, it is the highest setting. If I want to measure amps, that's going to be using this fork to measure the current through the wire, something like that. I'll show you that in a minute as well. Now I don't have any current flowing through this wire, so of course it reads zero. And then the last one is ohms or continuity. Continuity means that little sound symbol there. There's also another symbol for it, but that sound means that you can check for a continuous loop that we got a complete circuit, and there it makes a tone. So I got my conductors, got my power source, and the load for this circuit right here is the sound and the meter itself showing you that you got about one resistance. So the wire and then through the meter, it's got one, about a one ohm resistance. Now when you're measuring a wire, like whether it's another lead or whatever it is, generally if the wire is good, it will measure zero resistance. So usually on these here, they got these caps that uh, stick in. You might have to remove the cap. But like if I wanted to measure the resistance on this test lead, all right, and then they got a little cap there to protect that piece. It unscrews, and I can unscrew it and pull it off. And then should be, again, about the same thing, zero or one, all right, very small amount of resistance. And then, of course, the longer the wire, if I was to measure all 250 feet of this wire in here from black to black. Let's see if we can get the other end. Where is the other end at? Um, not going to be able to get the other end. But the resistance in that wire, obviously, because it's 250 feet, would be more. So what you're going to do is you're going to set up the meter, and on this one here, to measure resistance, we're going to put the black one in where the black is on common, and you're going to put the other lead, all right, depending on what you're doing. If you're measuring amps, we'll put it there. Milliamps, microamps would go there, and pretty much everything else for volts, ohms, and continuity will go in this one. So you're going to use these two outside edges, all right, and then you're going to set the meter to continuity, all right, and first, and then we'll go to resistance in a second. So I'm just going to make sure the meter works. When there's an OL, that means they're not touching. It's an open link. And it'll say open link until you take it and make a contact with it somewhere. So what you're going to do is you're going to measure the resistance in these items here. And you're going to write them down onto here. Okay? And that's all you're going to do for right now. So I got, but you're going to have two different light bulbs. One, as you see, is going to be off. So it's like this one here. And you're going to measure the resistance of one. They're both exactly the same, except this one's off and it's cool. And this one's hot. So don't touch it. You got to get the glove. And you got to unscrew it with a glove and then quickly measure the resistance, right? And when it, we can just do the first one together. I'll do the lamp with you. When you're measuring the resistance in the lamp, whether it's this meter here where it shows right here to here. All right, so I got 18 ohms. So I would write 18 ohms in there for that light. 17 and 16. Oh, 17, that's fine. Or I could use this one here, same thing. And it doesn't matter the red or the black, which one I put where. But as you can see, 17.7 .7 to be exact, okay? So this one's a little bit more precise. It doesn't matter the black and the red. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to measure the resistance in the heat kit, in the bigger white light bulb, the, what we call floodlight, the fan motor, and then the contactor you're going to measure at the coil right here, and the contacts are here, okay? So you're going to measure a side to side. That's going to get this magnet and give you a number, and then it's going to measure across here, for where it says contacts, and then the fan motor. And I got another contactor here, and a couple other things if you have some extra time to play around. All right, and then we're gonna talk about it. So you got about five minutes to do that. Just make sure that you use the meter to read each thing and then move on. Everybody uses the meter once to measure each thing, and then it might take a team to do this. You might have to have one guy unscrew it and hold it while the other guy or girl takes the meter and checks it out and just gets a quick reading. And if the class wants to just announce this reading, that's fine, okay? Any questions? All right, I'm gonna measure the resistance in the one that is hot now, and let's take a look, see if the resistance went up or down. All right, 21.9, so it went, it went up. It went up by about five ohms, all right, because as it heats up, that tungsten uh, builds up a little bit of resistance to it. All right, what'd you get for the relay coil? Relay coil, what'd you get? 11 ohms, okay. Doesn't matter what that number is, as long as you get a number, sometimes it can be extremely high, uh, but that number there, as long as it says that if the coil's good, it says that the coil itself is. And what about when I measure across the contacts? Open link, nothing. It's because they're open. It's like the switch being off. And then when this coil energizes, I need to supply some power to it to pull the switch down 
and then I could read zero ohms. It wouldn't have any resistance going through the contacts, okay? So that's a contactor, but something needs to happen for that to work. And then you had a fan motor, and uh, this fan motor here is another one that's also going to have a number. It doesn't matter what the number is, but as long as it has a number, we're good, okay? So if I take a look here, boom, 48, all right? Now look, these, the coil, the fan motor, are induction loads. That's not going to work with Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law will only work with resistive loads like a light or a heater coil, okay? Or it won't also work with this type of load, which is a capacitive load, okay? This is a capacitor. This is a little different. We're going to talk about that a little later. Uh, and then the bigger light bulb, the floodlight, uh, probably a bigger light bulb. It's got more resistance in it because it's got a bigger uh, filament and that it's a bigger, look at that. That's bouncing around because it's dirty. We'll try one last time here real quick. Ah, about 10 points. 10 point, actually, a little smaller. Yeah, the 100 watt. Maybe it's uh, 60 watt just like that one. But it's a little bit smaller. All right, so that's, that shocked me a little bit. Now, let me show you where we could use Ohm's Law. This came out of a dryer vent. This came out of, actually out of a dryer from Animal Science when they got rid of their old dryer. And this is what you would see if you opened up your dryer and you can kind of see a glowing thing happening in the back. That's what's back in behind that drum is one of these heater coils and all it does is supply usually 220 volts to it uh, and that heater coil would generate the heat as the dryer spins the airflow creates a little bit of circulation in the dryer and that air moves over the coil to keep it cool and uh, when it blows over then that heat gets transferred to your clothes and that's what causes the clothes to dry out so I'm gonna go ahead and take it and we're gonna use Ohm's law and we're gonna see what the resistance is real quick all right, so if I measure the resistance between the two points here, here, and here, we're going to get a number. What's that number? 9.8. We'll just round it up to 10. So we've got 10 ohms, and I'm going to supply a certain amount of voltage to it. So we'll set this at volts, and we're going to plug this in to see what the voltage is going to be. 122 volts. We'll round that down to 120. So if I take 120 and I divide it by 10, use Ohm's law, 12. what should the current be? 12, 12. 12, 12 amps. So if I want to confirm that, I set my meter at amps, clip it around one and only one of the wires, make sure nothing else is interfering with our electrical circuit here, and then I don't want this touching any metal. That's why you see these ceramic pieces here, keeping it up off the metal, and then I can go ahead and I can plug it in, right, and then we can read, give me a little bit more power for it there, plug it in, and then we can read our amps. Don't leave yet. And if you take a look, what's our amp reading? 12. 12. Ohm's law works for this one. And then what would you see? What's going to happen? Can you feel it right here? Can you feel a little bit of that? Yeah, it's going to start to glow. Don't touch it. You don't get that close to it because that could, I mean, you're only two inches away from 120 volts of current getting on you. So, uh, and then what's happening is it warms up on this one. This one is going down when it warms up, okay? The resistance is going down. Uh, I'm going to show you something a little bit later. You can start to see a glow right there. Uh, you got to have a certain amount of resistance for it to work. Like, look, take a look at this. This right here is the same thing. Watch this. You don't want to miss this. So let's go ahead and set this off. I'm going to set this off to the side. It's a little warm. But I want to show you one last thing before you leave. All right? And it's going to be real quick. So let's say I got, look, it's just like a heater coil. And I can take, we're going to need that power cord over here, boys. So I'm going to take this heater coil right here. We got a fire extinguisher just in case. I could read the certain resistance value right here, but uh, you can take, it's just like that thing there. It could spark up. If there's not enough resistance, it'll just trip the breaker. But you got this on video. You ready? All right, it's going to be quick. What? Oh, we got a bad connection. Let me get the new connection in. Let's do it one last time here real quick. Make sure we got a good connection. Got a video of this? Ready? Don't do this at home. All my YouTube people, don't do it at home. Oh no, we don't have a, we don't, we lost our, we lost our power somewhere. Let's try the different one, the black one here. All right, let's try it again. Here, clip good, clip good. I know you want to get to your next class. It's very exciting, probably. I don't want to go to my next yes, class. Yes, don't say that. You're recording on video. Don't <laughs> listen to you and say be quiet. Ready? Is it? Whoa! That took no time at all. Fire, fire, danger, Will Robinson. Whoa, huh? Don't try that at home. But you see, less resistance, that's a heater coil. It's just like that. Don't, don't try that, though. Don't go home and be like, oh, look what's 